have a special guest with us this morning. He has over $50 million of asset under his management. He is also a partner in over 100 apartment units, as well as office spaces, retail, industrial, and self-storage properties. Further, he and his partners created a company called Smart Asset Capital, which owns a handful of properties, and he is scheduled to close on another, on another one this month. All this was created in the past few years. I want to welcome my guest, Brock Morganson. Thanks for having me on, Kane. Thank you for taking your time and being here. This is my first podcast, so I apologize in advance for any technical issues that we may, may experience. I'm going to ask a few questions, and some of the viewers might be interested in listening to. You got a background in IT, and just curious, how did you get into real estate? Yeah, it's definitely not, you know, I was in, I was in a few different roles back when I was in my corporate career and none of it really had anything to do with real estate. It was, you know, obviously business skills translate well into, into real estate, but it was really, I started, I bought a duplex and that's kind of what got the ball rolling, you know, a ton of like a lot of people, you know, books, podcasts, that's what kind of built the fundamentals and yeah. showed me what was possible and, and what you can accomplish in real estate. And to me, it really, it just seemed like a, an easy business, you know, that, that is proven to work. Um, and that's what really led me into it. Did you read any books before jumping into your first duplex? Yeah, I think, I think it was, you know, like, like almost everyone, uh, rich dad, poor dad was the first one I, I, I read and that kind of got the ball rolling. And then before I did my first duplex, I mean, maybe there was one, you know, some podcasts in there, but I really didn't have that much of an education in real estate when I bought it. It just kind of, it just made sense, I guess. I was just like, Oh, it seems, seems like a good location. I mean, I, this is what's coming in and rent. I mean, this is what I thought expenses were. And so that, that one, I didn't really know much what I was doing. It ended up being a great deal. I got lucky, but it was, um, you know, after that was really when I got the ball rolling and I was like, all right, you know, came across bigger pockets and was just listening, literally just listening to one to two podcasts per day. You know, I was in a role at that time where I had a few hours each day where I was doing some kind of mindless work. So I was able to just crank some podcasts in while I was working. And that's what really looking back at it. I mean, that was where I was building my education that led to where I've gotten to today. That's amazing. That's a great story. I know some people would be asking about financing the first duplex. I think most people find it very difficult to purchase the first property. If you don't mind me asking, how did you manage to finance the duplex? Yeah. So ultimately after college, moved back in with my parents for a year or two. And that was kind of the goal. I had, you know, I'm going to save up some money and, and buy a, I didn't know what I was going to buy. I was like, I didn't know if it was what sort of property it was going to be, but I was just like, I'm going to save up some money and do that. So saved up probably like, like 10 or 15 grand. Um, and to me, and I always recommend, I mean, the easiest way to start real estate is FHA loan and a, and again, this, I'm not, I'm not sure if they might have something similar there in Canada. I'm not sure if down here we have FHA loan three and a half percent down. Um, you have to live in it for one year. So, I mean, it's really pretty, pretty doable, right? I mean, you can, you can find, find a duplex for a couple hundred grand, maybe depending on what market you're in, you know, put down 10 grand and uh, you're, you're in, right. You're in, you're into your first deal. So I think that's really the easiest way. Cause yeah, if you look at traditional 20, 25% down, I mean, 50 grand, 60 grand, maybe, I mean, that's, that's a lot of money to save up. Right. So that, that's hard, to, hard to get it going. So I think really the, the easiest way to start is to leverage some sort of loan like that. Um, I think most, you know, places will have some, something like that, where it's a lower amount down, but that that's really how I got started. Yeah. In Canada um, at the moment, I believe it's 5% down is the minimum. The interest is a little bit different, but I think it's doable as well. Especially in the out in the secondary markets, was it difficult to did you need some sort of uh, strict discipline as to save that initial down payment, or or was it pretty easy for you? Yeah, I, th I think I was I was being pretty frugal there the first year or two, and obviously living at home uh, helped a ton. I had paid off my car already, so I mean it was that that uh, that helped. Didn't have many expenses like compared to what I have now, but it's uh so that 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 was that made it easier definitely. But I think I think you you have to be you know, I think a lot of people come out and get their first job and they get that first, you know, cushy salary and they instantly start buying a whole bunch of stuff. 
And although I am, I, I do like the, you know, I don't like the idea of not, you know, living on zero and I, I like enjoying life too, but I think you have to have a certain level of, you know, I'm going to put away this amount of money to invest in real estate or whatever you want to invest in. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. That's amazing. How did you build your portfolio from pretty much right after duplex to over $15 million uh, of AUM? Yeah. So it was, it was an interesting transition. So I, so I, I get that duplex. Um, and then a few months after, after I got that first, so I'm, I'm living in the lower unit, three bedrooms in the lower unit. I get two roommates off, off like Facebook marketplace. And uh, so I'm literally living and living in this place and I have a tenant upstairs. So I'm living in this place for free paid after all utilities, you know, mortgage taxes, everything. And I think I was making like a couple hundred bucks a month too. And living for free. So, I mean, it was awesome. Instantly I was like, okay, this is, this is sweet. And I just, you know, I just did this duplex and like, you really have to put that much money down. Like, okay, how can I, how can I continue to, to grow this? So I started thinking of different ways instantly. I knew like, all right, I wanted to didn't start out as something as like, I'm just going to go huge. And this is going to be, you know, my full-time career. Um, started off as just, I, I just want to do more of this. So went down the, you know, different routes and started at, you know, where a lot of people started the wholesaling, flipping, that seemed like the logical next step to build some capital. I tried for a while, you know, I was putting out signs, sending out letters, doing everything I can, got a few leads here and there, but just never ended up, you know, getting, finding a deal to do in that space. So while, while I was doing that, I'm still kind of researching these different avenues. And I come across this concept of uh, syndication, which is, you know, partnering with other investors, leveraging other people's money to, to buy larger properties. And that really caught my attention. And I saw it as a way to, truly build like a business around real estate and not necessarily just piecing stuff together on the flipping wholesaling side. And that's where I was like, all right, this, this is the avenue I'm going to take. So I spent, and I instantly knew, right. That I didn't, I didn't have the net worth, the liquidity, the experience to go out and do this on my own. I knew I was going to need partners. So I decided to kind of pick one piece of the process, right. There's, if you kind of bucket in, there might be five or six different kind of pieces that fall into a syndicated deal. I decided to choose one piece that was underwriting. I kind of naturally came from an, a little bit of an analytical background. So that made sense. I understood spreadsheets. And so that's where I spent six months just learning everything I could about underwriting, practicing, you know, underwriting deals. And um, after could, I got you, three, could you describe about what, what the underwriting process means for some of the people that are watching? Yeah. So like the, the analysis of a, of a real estate deal, essentially. So, you know, plugging the numbers into a spreadsheet and deciding what purchase price makes sense based on the returns it's going to throw off. So, and, and it's definitely, as you get into larger deals, especially syndicated deals, it may, it's a little bit more complicated. You know, if you're just analyzing a duplex, it's pretty simple, right? I mean, you might want to do some projections, but you can, it's fairly simple. On the syndicated side, it gets a little more complicated because you're factoring in fees and equity splits and, and hold periods. So there, there's a lot to learn for sure on that side. And um, that's where I really spent all my time trying to learn as much as I could. But then once I got to a place where I, you know, I felt pretty confident and, you know, I was practicing, I wasn't submitting any offers. I was just practicing underwriting deals. Um, knew it, that was the time I had to go out and start finding partners. So I was, you know, at, at networking events every week, you know, whatever I could find in my area. Um, I was all over bigger pockets. It's ultimately how I ended up on bigger pockets. I connected with the first partner we kind of met up and we're like, Oh, we, you know, same goals. We both wanted to get into some larger deals. So we started, you know, staying in touch every week and fast forward a few months and this deal pops up, um, an 89 unit apartment building. And, uh, we end up getting under contract, and then we bring in one of his other buddies that had more experience. So us three are going to do this deal together. We do the deal and, you know, it works out and we, kind of fast forward we did we just kept doing more and more of them together and created our company and it's really how it worked out so i got i got lucky with the partnership because i wouldn't have been able to do those deals without having a partner that had that experience so that's really you know and i recommend to people is if you're looking to take that route right that, that route's not for everyone some people everyone has their own route to get into it um but partnerships are key and finding the right partner with experience that's going to be able to qualify for the loan and all that stuff is a huge part of it that that's crazy that's a that's an amazing story and when you were looking for so you were looking for partners and then you found them how did you find that 89 unit apartment building was it on the mls or through a private channel so that one was actually on uh on loopnet so similar to mls um 
and uh, it was it was it was under contract. Fell bet fell out of contract, so we kind of came in with a low ball offer and and uh, found it. So that was uh, one of the rare cases where you find a deal that works on LoopNet. I think uh, most of the time those are kind of they call it what like the or deals go to die. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, there's deals on there for sure. It's it's usually deals that have been sitting on the market for a while. But yeah, we kind of got a rare instance on that one. That's amazing. I know we don't have too much time left. The last question is, if someone was starting out fresh, probably just finished college or university, and they want to get into something like what you do, looking back at what you did, how would you change and what would you recommend to them to get to where you are now? I would say start the education process as soon as you can. I, th I think really there's a six to 12 month you know, horizon, depending on where you're at. I mean, maybe you're already you're further along and you're, you already have the money, to just do a deal. But I think realistically, there's a six to 12 month education period where you need to learn everything you, you, know, you can listen to, listen to a podcast a day, read, you know, read a whole bunch of books, look up, find a whole bunch of real estate books online. I mean, just do all that stuff and also get out and start networking. Go to most, unless you live in the middle of nowhere. I mean, most places have, hey, have a local real estate meetup. Um, start going to those education networking and just, just do that for the next six months. And you'll be amazed how, how much you learn and where you're at six months from now with the relationships you build and the education that, that you can, you can fit into that time. And then from there, you're ultimately setting yourself up just uh, for a lot better long-term success. Is there a website that you want to share with the audience? Yeah. Yeah. So we, there's a, I'll throw out two of them. So there's, there's our, our company website, which is smartassetcapital.com. And that's where we're, you know, we're doing the syndication stuff. We also recently launched kind of like an educational arm that has some free ebook downloads and stuff like that. That is uh, capitalclub.io. Awesome. That's amazing. Thank you so much for your time, Brock. I really appreciate it and look forward to speaking to you more and learning about what you do. And it's really exciting to have you on the show. Definitely. Thanks for having me on.